Johnny Depp to play Satan in Monty Python, Star's offensive and expensive film. Johnny Depp has been cast as Satan in the upcoming Terry Gilliam movie, The Carnival, At the End of Days. Gilliam, the American-born British filmmaker, has described the movie as an apocalyptic comedy, which will also feature God and Adam and Eve. Depp, 60-year-old, has worked with the 83-year-old Monty Python star before, most notably in the 1998 Hunter S. Thompson film adaptation of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. It will be Depp's second feature film since the conclusion of his high-profile defamation case against ex-wife Amber Heard in the U.S. two years ago. Depp's last big-screen role was in the French historical drama Jean de Berry, in which he played King Louis XV and which premiered at Cannes Film Festival last year. Gilliam is known for his instantly recognizable animated collages, which were famously used in the opening credits of Monty Python. Speaking about his new project with French film magazine Premiere, Gilliam described it as, a comedy where God decides to destroy humanity. And the only one trying to save us is Satan because he needs people in hell. Otherwise, he won't have a job for eternity. Gilliam also confirmed that Jeff Bridges will play God in the movie, depicted in the form of nature and using animation to bring it to life. Additionally, Gilliam said the cast will include Adam Driver and Jason Momoa, although their roles are yet to be revealed. Gilliam said the movie will feature a modern Adam and Eve, adding of the casting, now we need a woman to complete all that. Gilliam teased that the film would be very expensive and very funny for those who like to be offended. He confirmed that work would start on the film in January 2025. Peaky Blinders, No Holds Barred, movie announced with Cillian Murphy, back as Tommy Shelby. A Peaky Blinders film has been announced, with Oscar winner Cillian Murphy returning to star. It seems like Tommy Shelby wasn't finished with me, Murphy said in a statement as his return to playing the gangster was confirmed by Netflix. The streaming site shared a photography of a bulky script titled A Peaky Blinders Film to reveal the news. It follows on from the BBC show created by Stephen Knight, which ran for six series from 2013 to 2022, and will be helmed by season one director Tom Harper. Murphy said it was very gratifying to be re-collaborating with Knight and Harper on the film, adding, this is one for the fans. The Irish actor will also co-produce the film. Knight said he was genuinely thrilled to be making the movie and promised it will be an explosive chapter in the Peaky Blinders story. No holds barred, he said, full-on Peaky Blinders at war. The original series followed the notorious Shelby family, a gang rising to prominence in the lawless streets of post-First World War Birmingham. Production on the film is set to begin in Birmingham in September, Knight has confirmed, with the storyline taking the family into the Second World War. Murphy's performance as Shelby raised his profile further after appearances in films including the Dark Knight Batman franchise, Inception, and 28 Days Later. He then swept awards earlier this year for his starring role in Oppenheimer, released in 2023. As well as his Oscar, he took home a Golden Globe, a BAFTA, and a Screen Actors Guild Award for his turn as physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer in Sir Christopher Nolan's biopic. Muhammad Ali's childhood home goes on sale for $1.5 million. Muhammad Ali's childhood home in Kentucky has gone on sale. The two-bedroom, one-bathroom house in Louisville, Kentucky, was converted into a museum that offered a glimpse into the early years of The Greatest, when he still went by the name of Cassius Clay. It went on the market on Tuesday, along with two neighboring homes. One was turned into a welcome center and gift shop while the other was meant to become a short-term rental. The owners are asking for $1.5 million for the three properties. Finding a buyer willing to maintain Ali's childhood home as a museum would be the best possible result, co-owner George Pacetto said. This is a part of Americana. This is part of our history. And it needs to be treated and respected as such, said Pacetto, a Philadelphia lawyer and former Pennsylvania State Boxing Commissioner. The museum opened shortly before the boxer's death in 2016. 
Pochetto and his business partner at the time renovated the frame house to how it looked when Ali lived there with his parents and younger brother. You walk into this house, you're going back to 1955, and you're going to be in the middle of the Clay family home, Pachetto said in a 2016 interview. Using old photos, the developers replicated the furnishings, appliances, artwork, and even its pink exterior from Ali's days living there. The museum featured videos focused on the story of Ali's upbringing, not his storied boxing career. To me, that's the bigger story and the more important story, Pachetto said in an interview last week. Ali lived in the home when he left for the 1960 Olympics in Rome, from which he returned a gold medal winner, launching a career that made him one of the world's most recognizable faces and becoming a three-time heavyweight boxing champion. Despite its high-profile debut, the museum ran into financial troubles and closed less than two years after opening. The museum is situated in a western Louisville neighborhood several miles from downtown, where the Muhammad Ali Center preserves his humanitarian and boxing legacies. As efforts to reopen the Childhood Museum languished, offers to move the one 200-square-foot house to Las Vegas, Philadelphia, and even Saudi Arabia were turned down, Pachetto said. I wouldn't do that because it's an important piece of Louisville history, Kentucky history, and I think it needs to stay right where it is, he said. Vladimir Putin warns Russia, stays firm on nuclear option to attack West. Vladimir Putin has warned he could provide long-range weapons to nations to strike Western targets in response to NATO allies, allowing Ukraine to use their arms to attack Russian territory. The Russian president also reissued Moscow's readiness to use nuclear weapons if it sees a threat to its sovereignty. During an audience with international journalists on Wednesday, he said the recent actions by the West will further undermine international security and could lead to very serious problems. That would mark their direct involvement in the war against the Russian Federation, and we reserve the right to act the same way. It comes after the US, UK, and Germany authorized Ukraine to hit some targets on Russian soil with the long-range weapons they are supplying to Kyiv. Mr. Putin also claimed that using some Western-supplied weapons meant military personnel of those countries were controlling the missiles and selecting targets. He used this as justification for Moscow being able to take asymmetrical steps elsewhere in the world. If they consider it possible to deliver such weapons to the combat zone to launch strikes on our territory and create problems for us, why don't we have the right to supply weapons of the same type to some regions of the world where they can be used to launch strikes on sensitive facilities of the countries that do it to Russia. We will think about it, Mr. Putin added. Asked whether Russia could resort to using nuclear arms, Mr. Putin said the conditions for using that arsenal are clearly spelled out in Moscow's security doctrine. For some reason, they believe in the West that Russia will never use it. Look at what is written there. If somebody's actions threaten our sovereignty and territorial integrity, we consider it possible to use all means at our disposal," he said of Russia's nuclear doctrine. In the discussions, that lasted more than three hours, the Russian president added that nothing will change in terms of Russia-U.S. relations whether Joe Biden or Donald Trump wins the U.S. election in November. We will work with any president the American people elect. I say absolutely sincerely, I wouldn't say that we believe that after the election, Something will change on the Russian track in the American politics. <laughs> Boba Fett Action Figure sells for record-breaking $525,000 An extremely rare Star Wars action figure has become the world's most valuable toy after it sold for a record $525,000. The hand-painted and missile-firing model of the bounty hunter Boba Fett was never released to the public after it was deemed a choking hazard in the 1970s. The toy, one of only two still in existence, comfortably beat what was previously the world's priciest toy, a one-of-a-kind Barbie wearing a one-carat diamond, which sold for $302,000 in 2010. Heritage Auctions said the price of the figure more than doubled the record for the most expensive Star Wars action figure sold at auction which was previously held by a rocket-firing Boba Fett that went for $236,000 in 2022. 
The model was created by toy company Kenner in 1979 based on the character, who was set to appear in The Empire Strikes Back the following year. The toy, featuring a rocket-firing backpack, was not available in stores and was to be sent for free to anyone who could prove they had bought four other Star Wars action figures. But the rocket-toting toys never arrived after reports that competitor Mattel's missile-firing Battlestar Galactica toys had become choking hazards. Instead, when the figure arrived, the rocket had been glued into place, and there was a note to consumers explaining, the launcher has been removed from the product for safety reasons. As many as 100 prototypes are believed to have been created, but this was one of only two which were hand-painted. It survived after, it was salvaged from a box of discarded toys deposited there for employees to take home, according to Star Wars expert and dealer Brian Ratchfall's letter of provenance. The rocket-firing Boba Fett action figure long ago became such a mythic icon that people worldwide know about it even if they don't collect anything at all. We knew this one had a chance to enter the record books, and it was thrilling to see it become the most valuable toy in the world," said Heritage Auctions Executive Vice President Joe Maddalena. The Star Wars Signature Auction brought in $1,662,000 after attracting more than 1,500 bidders. It featured a second Boba Fett figure, a Skywalker lightsaber, and a third draft of George Lucas's screenplay for the first film when it was still called The Star Wars, from the adventures of Luke Starkiller. Paris Hilton, Among Users, targeted in TikTok cyber attack. TikTok has taken measures to stop a cyber attack targeting several brand and celebrity accounts. A spokesperson for the company said, we have been collaborating closely to restore account access and implement enhanced security measures to safeguard their account moving forward. TikTok said the number of accounts compromised is very small and it is working with affected account owners to restore access if needed. A source at TikTok told Reuters news agency the account of reality TV star Paris Hilton was targeted but had not been compromised. TikTok parent company ByteDance is currently challenging a law that requires it to sell TikTok by next January or face a ban in the U.S. The White House said it wants to see Chinese-based ownership ended on national security grounds. TikTok has argued it will not share U.S. user data with the Chinese government and that it has taken substantial measures to protect the privacy of its users. The legal challenge could argue a ban would deprive the app's 170 million U.S. users of their First Amendment rights to freedom of speech. The law could also face opposition from TikTok creators who rely on it for their income, while China has previously said it would oppose a forced sale. The use of TikTok by the federal government's nearly 4 million employees on devices owned by its agencies is already banned in the U.S. However, there are limited exceptions for law enforcement, national security, and security research purposes.